All right, so this is Spider-Man No Way Home, directed by John Watts. Uh, it's, I'll say how I feel about it in a second, but it starts off with the, uh, the end credit scene from Far From Home, where everybody knows Spider-Man is Peter Parker, J. Jonah Jameson reveals it. Um, some people are on Mysterio's side, believing him that uh, Spider-Man actually attacked him with those drones, so uh, he's getting interrogated, things like that. Um, it's actually started to neg negatively affect his life and MJ's and Ned's, um, to the point where they couldn't get into MIT because of the controversy and stuff like that. So he goes to Doctor Strange to try to fix it, but he messes up that whole spell or whatever because he's trying to change the spell even though you're not supposed to. So it ends up bringing the villains from the other, you know, Spider-Man movies into this universe. And so he has to take care of that and maybe even cure them so that they don't end up going back and then just dying like they did originally. So there's certain parts I like, certain parts I don't like. Uh, I like the action. Uh, the effects look all right, other than Spider-Man looking like he's from Spider-Man PS4 at some po some points because he looks fake, and uh, the he also looks like an action figure in certain parts too. So you know there's that, <laughs> um, but uh, for the most part everything looks good. The villain's powers look look all right. There's some cool moments. The climax, the clim climactic fight, uh, looks awesome. I mean it's 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 really cool scene. It has some cool fan service moments. And I like the soundtrack, and they even bring in some music from the the other uh, movies, which was cool, some, some nice moments. You know, I really enjoyed the beginning part of this, where it's the fallout from Far From Home, because, you know, I, you know, seeing all the press around him, there's one scene where he goes to Aunt May's house and there's helicopters outside, and he's trying to explain things, but she keeps talking and things like that, and they see it on the news. Like, that was a, a, a nice moment. But after that scene, well, after, you know, that beginning part, once the spell gets, gets done, it becomes, Pretty much Spider-Man fan fiction or fan service, the movie, uh, where it's just nothing but nostalgia. It's like, hey, remember this line from, from the other movies? Hey, remember this, remember this, remember this? We've seen that a lot lately and it's, it's getting kind of old for me. Uh, I was rolling my eyes at a lot of moments in this, a lot of certain jokes like, oh, you don't use web shooters? Obviously, I'll spoil it, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are in this movie. And uh, obviously there's the part where Tobey Maguire is like, well, I don't use web shooters. And he shoots web out of his hands. And the, the movie stops dead almost so it can be like, hey, are you guys ready for this? You know, you ready fans? You know, there's this one part with the, uh, has to do with one of the Netflix Marvel shows. And I thought that was awesome. But at a certain point, like the nostalgia is, it's a little too much and it starts to feel cheap to where I really was rolling my eyes in the theater. People in the theater were talking the whole time and they were like, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. And I can't be upset because that's what this movie is for, it seems like. It's, it doesn't really feel like a continuation of Far From Home or the other movies at a certain point. It just becomes nothing but nostalgia. And, you know, some of it doesn't make sense, too, because some of them get far from other time periods. Tobey Maguire is a, it, it looks old, <laughs> if we're being honest. Uh, Gwen Stacy's already died, but Electro's there and obviously the Lizard's there. It's, it, it's... So I guess they were pulled from that universe at different time periods. I guess that's the only way it would make sense. And so that was you know, not, the, not the best for me. The idea of being able to just cure the, the villains feels kind of lame, <laughs> but whatever. It, it becomes too much. It becomes overload, right? If, if it's too much. Whereas, you know, you get a little cameo or you get a little something like that. That's great, but when it becomes your entire movie or almost your entire movie, it starts to feel cheap. It feels like, hey, you know, people are automatically going to like this because it reminds them of something they already like. You know, I'm getting tired of the MCU when it feels like they have to bombard you with jokes, where the jokes in this were actually really good. Like, there's a Hannibal Burris joke early on where he's on Mysterio's side, was pretty funny. Uh, uh, but they stop dead for certain moments so that they can tell jokes, uh, and so that didn't work for me. What is Spider Man invincible? I mean, in Far From Home, he got hit by a, a train, and in this, he's right next to a pumpkin bomb when it explodes and nothing happens. The minute he got hit with that pumpkin bomb, I was like, all right, so nothing matters. <laughs> nothing matters when he gets attacked with literally anything. And the ending, what finally happens at the ending, it feels like they just want to separate from the MCU. They want to, like, distance themselves from the MCU, which is a good thing for me, kind of, because I feel like. Spider-Man isn't able to be his own person as a result of being always linked to the MCU, but not to this level to where it's almost like they want to completely separate all like all together. And then there's also this thing where it's like, what do people remember? What do they not? They remember certain things, but not other things. So I'm not going to spoil that part, but 
that was a little bit shaky for me. And then finally, we get that payoff from Venom 2, the uh, uh, after uh, after credit scene, um, well, the mid credit scene or whatever in the uh, in Venom 2, where we get another end credit scene. I thought he was going to be in this movie, uh, Tom Hardy's Venom, but he wasn't. He's only here to set up you know, leaving part of the symbiote <laughs> behind so we can get the symbiote story and this, this, with this version of Spider-Man, but still have Venom be in his own movie and do his own thing. You know, it feels unnecessary. Like, why do you need two end credit scenes for that? <laughs> like, okay, that's, that, okay, if you say so. So that's it. Uh, I think that this is you know, like almost like, like a fan fiction, Spider-Man fan fiction plot, uh, where it's nothing but endless, like, fan service and stuff, and it's so predictable because of that to where everything that somebody said was going to happen in this movie, I think did. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's that aspect of it, but at least it was effective. It was entertaining. I liked a, a lot of it. Uh, of the Marvel movies that I've seen this year, it's the best one. <laughs> I don't know if that's saying much, <laughs> but I did enjoy myself, so I'm still gonna give it a good enough and whatever. That's Spider-Man No Way Home and we're done.